Welcome to the Lady Charmaine Live Show. I'm your host, Lady Charmaine, and my guest today is a triple threat. What do you get when you mix good looks, dancing, and singing? Well, my next guest, who we can call Superfly, coming up right after this. Lady Charmaine and my guest today is an actor who has starred in movies and television shows like Let It Shine, Burning Sands, American Crime, and Grownish. And he's here today to talk about the remake of the new movie Superfly in theaters Wednesday. I want you to help me welcome none other than Mr. Trevor Jackson. Welcome to the show, Trevor. <laughs> What's going on? Thank you so much. You're welcome now, Trevor. See, I got a chance to meet you about three years ago at church in Los Angeles at one church. And I wanted to tell you that you were the sweetest young man. You were sweet. You were charming. You were so nice. And my daughter and I, we just fell in love with you that day. So I just wanted to say, what keeps you grounded? Because you weren't all Hollywoodish at all. I didn't get any of those airs. So what keeps you grounded? I think uh, my faith. I think my faith keeps me grounded. I think my family keeps me grounded. And just knowing why I do it, you know, I I don't do it for any other reason than to, to show others that it's possible to do whatever it is that they feel in their hearts. Um, and, yeah, I just want to do good work, man. I, I, love, I love music. I love, I love acting. And I feel like when you focus on the work, you never have to worry about uh, getting crazy because I feel like people that their egos get in the way once they think past the work, you know. Absolutely. Well, you know what? I want to jump right in because on last night, I got a chance to screen in Oakland a uh, Superfly with 20 of my friends and guests. And I want to say, first off, I want to give a shout out to Sony. Thank you so much for allowing us to come. I'm even sporting my Superfly shirt right now. I'm really happy about that. But man, I was so nervous, Trevor, last night. I wasn't sure what the remake was going to be like because, you know, Ron O'Neill was 35 when he started in Superfly and you were 21. So I'm like, oh, Lord, what did they do? But I wanted to tell you, we all had to literally clap and give y'all a standing ovation. So I want to say kudos. You did your wow. thing. We were also pleasantly surprised because when I say it was a woosah moment, boy, we was all relieved walking out, even the OGs. We was like, man, we weren't sure what that was going to be like. That movie was so good. So I want to tell all the viewers, y'all, make sure you go and check it out. It's in theaters Wednesday. You will not be disappointed. So I wanted to get that off my chest right now. So, so what Thank was you so much. you're welcome? What was the audition process like when you're auditioning for such a classic movie and a classic role? What was the audition process like for you? Um, I auditioned twice, uh, and each time it was like, oh, he's too young, he's not a big enough name, yada yada yada, and I just kept having my agents and managers um, pester, pester them, like, yo, hit him up again, hit him up again, they find somebody, they find somebody. Uh, finally, uh, Joseph invited me to his house. He walks into the room. And he's like, so you're in the room with us? I was like, yeah. He's like, okay, well, you're in it. I just wanted to see you face to face. And, uh, which, uh, yeah, you're a guy. So I'm like, what? I mean, obviously, I acted cool when he told me, but I got in the car. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> Lost it. Oh, well, well, I'm, I'm sure you did. I am sure you did, because not many people yeah. get that, you know, that opportunity that you have received. So that right there, when I say that's um, definitely a blessing. And so you also had great chemistry with one of your co-stars. He goes by the name of Mr. Jason Mitchell. And I wanted to know, how did both of you develop that chemistry? Because it was like, although there was a height difference, he was a little shorter, you were a little taller, but there was truly a chemistry there on screen. Did you guys have to hang out together to develop that chemistry? Yo, uh, it, we didn't have to hang out. We just wanted to. I feel like after we met each other, we just clicked. It's, I don't think uh, I've met anybody in that short amount of time and had love for him like that. I really love him like a brother. and We agree on multiple levels, not just in the same way, just in our lives and, you know, our dream things we think about, things we're afraid of. It's just, we're just kind of the same in that way. And so uh, to be able to play on screen, that was the, the best days because it didn't feel like work. Literally just would be ourselves. Absolutely. Now, how did you prepare for this role? Because 
this gentleman, you know, of course, he was a drug dealer. And, of course, you, you have, like, just a sweet personality. Had you ever seen the movie before? Had you ever even heard of the film before? Um, yes, my uh, dad made me watch it when I was very young. Mm. Um, don't know why he did that because I didn't understand it. But, um, you know, I think my main preparation for this character was just trying to find someone who I was afraid of but also wanted to be like. Mm-hmm. And I think Priest is that perfect now is just someone that seems approachable and cool, but he has just enough snap to where you, you never, you know, uh, you just care for your cautious when you're around him. Well, I wanted to say um, you did a very good job again in this role. And also Isai Morales was also in it. It was good to see him because I was in my very first movie with Isai Morales and I was 32 years ago. So that was good seeing him in the film as well. Wow. Yeah. And also the I heard that Future, I read, not heard him heard, I read that Future was one of the producers of the film. And also he also worked on the soundtrack. And this soundtrack, of course, was one of the soundtracks that even outgrossed the film. So what was it like working with producers like Future on this film? That was amazing. I think he's the perfect guy. You know, I think he's the voice of Atlanta. And um, just the voice of this generation when it comes to hip-hop, I feel like it. I don't think it could pick me like that. Okay. Now, Trevor, you are a heartthrob. The screen loves you. I mean, you just came across and all the little ladies in there just melting. We walking out talking about how good looking you look. And that hair. Oh, my God. First, let's talk about this hair. Whose idea was it? Was that a perm? Was it a hard press? What was it? What did they do to your hair? Uh, they just straightened it um, every day. And that was, a, that was the thing that went between me, X, and Joel. We kept trying to figure out the hair. <laughs> We're thinking about going curly, thinking about, you know, cutting it more. Or something like that. I really was pushing for the straight because I love the original. I thought that was the coolest part of that. He's this guy who could whip butt, but also, you know, had straight hair, which you don't see too often. So definitely wanted to have straight hair. And, we, you know, I think we came across the perfect balance. And it being shorter. Mm-hmm. And, and what was so cool, you know, as you was fighting and stuff, you were slicking your stuff back even while you were fighting. I'm like, you better go ahead. You was making sure your hair stayed intact. <laughs> <laughs> but before we go, I have this one last question, because like I said, you are a heartthrob. It comes across on the screen as well. What is the age of the oldest woman that ever tried to hit on you? Well, 60, maybe. 60. Man, what, what was her game like? What did she try to say? <laughs> what did she say when she tried to hit on you? Uh, she, didn't, she, didn't say, she didn't say much. She just kind of like made a sound and touched my, my butt. Oh. <laughs> okay, I was, that. I was somewhere, I was somewhere like some of it to my music. So I was like walking and laughing. She was like, boy, maybe old, but she didn't grab my boobs. <laughs> Okay, well, I want to say, Trevor, thank you so much for coming on the show. And I want to remind the audience that you go and check out this film, Superfly, the remake in theaters June 13th. And you are going to be pleasantly surprised. And again, congratulations. And I wish you all the success, Trevor. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. I had a blast. God bless you. Uh, Thank you. God bless you, too. Bye bye. And again, I want to make sure that you all go and check out the movie Superfly in theaters right now on Wednesday. Make sure you go and check it out. He is such a sweet gentleman and literally how he is in person is what you're going to see come across on the screen. And I want to say I was so proud of this young man. And also the Lady Charmaine live show is sponsored by Rebuilding Your Dreams After the Storm. And Rebuilding Your Dreams After the Storm is a women's conference that's made and geared just for you. Now, if you feel like you lost your purpose, your vision, if you feel like your dreams have just slipped away from you because of an unexpected storm that has just literally left your life in disarray. Well, this is a conference that's made just for you. So if you want to rebuild your dreams and get your life back on track, don't miss this one day conference. It's going to be Saturday, July the 28th in El Grove. For ticket information, just go to Rebuilding Your Dreams after the storm again it's rebuilding your dreams after the storm and it's rebuilding your dreams conference.eventbrite.com to get your tickets and don't forget to join me on hot topics you can join my hot topics page it's hot topics real talk no chaser and follow me on all social media at i am lady charmaine on instagram lady charmaine tv on youtube and a lady charmaine live and again i want to say thank you to my guest mr trevor jackson for coming on the show see you guys next time bye-bye